So the first actual dyno result, and of course we have to look at what I kind of consider the benchmark motor in this class. So let's look at the Emacs RS1106 lineup. When we looked at them on the thrust stand, they were a nice mix of power and efficiency, but now we can get a better picture of how well suited they are across a larger range of loads. So I've got the usual prop lineup here to compare with, a bunch of two inch, two and a half, uh, and three inch T-mount props, uh, as well as finally the uh, Rotorx 3044 that's also available in T-mount, but it's a lot more closely related to the old uh, 3040 tri-blade, which is for five millimeter shaft. And also just uh, for a bit of context, here's kind of an average uh, looking four inch prop, uh, Gemfan 4040 on the red trace. So you can see how well uh, bracketed this whole thing is for the class of props that uh, we really are most likely to run on it. What we're looking at here is the 4500 KV, and this is a 3S test. And this is really the nicest looking of the bunch. We've got a, a huge patch of 70% uh, efficiency uh, down there in the peak, uh, and a good portion of the power band is covered by at least 50% or better. The super light loading of the uh, the 2030, the, the very small two inch props, not super exciting, really kind of pushing below where we would want it to be. Um, although potentially if you ran this at much higher voltage, you would you'd certainly have to to get the thrust out of it. Um, as the uh, torque curve of the prop continues up, it's going to push into a little more usable area on the motor. But really, this is not the best match if you're doing a lightweight 2-inch. The middle loading with the uh, 2035 bullnose and the uh, 2535 uh, bi-blade uh, shoots right through the sweet spot, which isn't the ideal position for it because prop unloading is going to have a drastic effect on this and push us uh, right down near the bottom of where we want to be. But the motor certainly has plenty of torque to uh, carry even high RPMs at that load. So while it's not perfectly ideal, it will definitely like being run a lot harder with uh, these with these uh, lighter props. So fast forward motion where prop unloading is going to reduce the load on the motor a lot is gonna push you into a less ideal portion of the motor's uh, efficiency band. But if you're doing heavy punch outs or dive recovery or anything that's gonna load the motor up more, uh, then these are going to put you right into the uh, the best possible performing uh, portion of the motor. The slightly heavier loaded props are probably in a more ideal position for general use, the uh, 3020 by blade uh, and actually the 25 35 by 4 uh, which is a little heavier loading than the 3020. These are high enough above our uh, peak efficiency uh, band there that uh, prop unloading is going to push them down into it a lot more of the time. And so you're more likely to be at the ideal working uh, area of the motor running uh, those these sort of medium load uh, two and two and a half inch props. The heavier load of the 3044 doesn't look so great on the bench. We're definitely in a lower uh, portion of efficiency. We're dipping down into the mid 40% efficiency zone. Um, prop unloading is going to have a large effect on this. It will uh, take a look at uh, more where it's going to be uh, later. But you're going to sacrifice some efficiency uh, to run a heavier prop like this, and you're going to rely on unloading uh, to claw back a lot of the that efficiency in the motor running. Heavier, uh, more static loads like dive recovery uh, are going to be in a worse performing uh, portion of the motor. So from here we can pop over to the 6000 kV and the higher kV motors were run at 2S. We see a slight drop in uh, maximum power output that comes from the uh, the reduction in our, our ultimate RPM, our unloaded RPM from the KV and the voltage that this is run at. Um, but we also see quite a large drop in efficiency, which is unfortunate. So the construction of the, the uh, 6000 KV motor uh, is not as nice as the 4500. And because and this is at a lower voltage as well, so because of uh, ESC issues, this actually has a bit of a head start on efficiency. So the fact that the efficiency is lower means that it's uh, losing all of that benefit and more. But overall, the uh, the zones are very much similar. Uh, that that light 2030 is probably even less than ideal. Uh, matchup in this combination. You can see we're well and truly below our peak efficiency there. So if you ran this on 3S uh, and ran at high throttle, it's going to be uh, a little better, but we're out of the peak performing and we're probably taking a 10 or 15% efficiency penalty um, from this lighter loading prop. And the relationships between everything else feels pretty much the same. From here, we can pop over to the 7500 KV 
And there again, you can see the uh, increase in power from the, uh, the KV increasing, but also we take another slight efficiency hit. This one not as drastic as coming up uh, from the 4500, um, but the bands are still sliding up and it's especially bad in the very low RPM range. You see this, uh, this middle red efficiency zone here pops up quite a bit further into our uh, RPM range. And we do have an area of good peak efficiency here at the top, which is almost in the same place as it was before on the uh, 6000 kV. It's just a little further up in the uh, RPM band than it was. So you've got to push the motor a little harder to get into that 60% um, efficiency zone, which is unfortunate. The positioning of the varying prop loads still holds for this, although our area of, of peak efficiency in the middle, it does feel to be a little bit wider than it was previously. It's uh, larger in size, um, but it's also covering a bit more. So like that uh, small 2030 is tucking up just inside of it, so we'll still push down out of it, but not quite as bad. And the middle kind of three inch by blade load area, uh, we're just touching into the, uh, the middle of that sweet spot. But if I toggle back to the 4500, you can see just how much efficiency that we're losing with this highest KV option. And the power is actually uh, pretty similar if you look at the position of our uh, peak throttle line there. It's especially apparent in the, uh, again, that low uh, RPM area, just how much red that we have here. And we've got a lot of much higher efficiency that's poking down into these lower loading areas. So the build quality on the 4500 KV certainly looks to be a lot better than the, uh, either the 6000 or the 7500 KV versions. Finally, we can look at all of the 100% throttle traces and see what sort of power we're actually putting out. These two traces here are the uh, 2S the 2S tests of so the 6000 and the 7500 kV version, the one that's starting down here in the middle and going all the way up here to the top is the 4500 kV on 3S. So looking at the 3044, the power that we're pulling in from there on this 4500 is about 142 watts, which is a lot for a little uh, 1106 motor. Looking down at the 6000 kV, the crossover point around there is just about 100 watts, so a good bit lower. But obviously we're getting a lot less thrust out of that, um, out of that as well. Around that point on uh, the 3044, that's about 180 grams of thrust uh, versus 233 up where we're crossing with that 4500. Now thrust-wise, if we compare these two props, we see something that we saw on the bench as well. Uh, the 3044 here on the uh, 4500 is getting around 230 grams of thrust. However, the 3020 by blade is actually making around 260 or so. So you actually get a little more thrust out of the uh, lighter load uh, just because we have get so much more RPM out of it. Uh, the motor's not getting bogged down as much. So in static tests, you'll uh, really often see these uh, two props, both with the uh, 3044 and 3020 by blade, actually getting uh, similar numbers. So you can see kind of why that is here because of the loading. And with the 7500 kV, that's gonna be even more extreme. So we're looking at about 230 grams here. If we assume that this is going to uh, drag down kind of into the same, uh, the same location as the 4500, up here where uh, it's not dragged down quite so much, we're getting uh, 270 grams of thrust. So we're actually making quite a bit more power. And the same holds on the, uh, the torque curve of the 6000 kV as well. Um, up here, we're looking at just ab above 180 grams of thrust on the 3044, and on the 3020, we're at just about 200. So maybe about 15 grams in thrust difference uh, in the static thrust um, between these two props in favor of the 3020. Now, how that behaves in the air is going to be complicated. Unloading is going to give you more RPM, which leads to, on the more aggressive prop, quite a lot more thrust. But as unloading is kicking in, aerodynamic forces are also causing the propeller to lose thrust as well. Uh, and that's going to hurt the 3020 a lot more than the 3044. The higher pitch is going to have more grip on the air uh, as it's in a faster moving airstream uh, compared to the 3020. So if we go back to this 143 and look at where 30% power zone is going to be, that's going to fall down right into here, the mid-weight 3-inch by blades. So this is sort of where you expect uh, this prop to unload to down at uh, near 100 watts. 
So you can see it does unload quite a lot. And when it unloads, um, as the RPM uh, increases, we get quite a lot more thrust out of it. You know, we're looking up at uh, 300 grams and more thrust, uh, where our static test is only hitting 233. But we're not quite down into the uh, peak efficiency zones. So we're still going to take a little bit of a battery power penalty to get there. Also looking at the slope of the throttle curves, the 4500 definitely looks to be stronger than the uh, 7500. We're losing less torque as the uh, loading increases, although it does look like we're starting to hit saturation up here above um, sort of two and a half Newton centimeters of torque, uh, where the drop-off uh, is increasing quite a lot more than it is at lower RPMs. So this is probably around where the limits of this family of motors is. The 7500 kV is dropping off more, so at higher loads it's suffering a little bit and we're not getting uh, the RPM out of it. So it does look like if you were running a 3044 uh, on that 7500, um, you're probably going to get a little less performance out of it compared to the 4500 with higher voltage. The 7500 is capable of higher unloaded RPMs, and so on the very, very light loadings, uh, you are going to get more RPM out of it than the more efficient 4500. But if you're running the voltage much higher, then that is probably going to balance out as well. In the middle tier props, we're looking at about a 100 watt load uh, on that uh, 3020 by blade on the 7500, 90 on the 4500 3S, and this is about 70 uh, watts on the 6000. And unloading for this range of props is going to push you down about here, halfway between uh, the lightweight 2 inch and the uh, medium 2.5. So those cover right over the sort of middle of that sweet spot. Our midweight two and a half props are crossing around about 85 watts on the high side and 60 watts on the uh, low side. And the ultralight 3020 is down at about 60 watts on the high side and 45 watts on the low side. I think it's interesting also the, uh, the gap between uh, these torque curves. The 4500 kV and the 6000 kV feel like they have very similar spacing between them. It's really only the 75 that seems to be suffering under heavier load. It's losing RPM quite a bit more uh, compared to either of the other two, even though the uh, efficiency is similar between the 7500 and the 6000. The 7500 is not taking the load nearly as well. Where obviously with the 4500, um, even at near the same power level, it's certainly handling the uh, increased torque loads a lot better. So the rest of the motor construction is certainly able to keep up. There's just something that's off with this uh, 7500 kV motor a little bit.